Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So after staring at my dormer window in the attic for several days and not being satisfied with the look of the wallpaper, I decided to create a template out of some scrap pieces from the flooring that I used on the original side of the attic. I decided to cover the walls inside the dormer partially with this veneer. Now I created a small template for the area and as I mentioned to you dolls before that the little dormer area is not perfectly aligned or square which is not a problem because it's a very common occurrence among life-size houses and doll houses. So I've created this template and I'm just cutting out the veneer. Now anytime you're doing something like this be very careful and conscious as to where your fingers are. But again I'm just cutting along the edge of the paper template that I created out of graph paper. Now I want you to look at it closely. This is a custom template specifically for that dormer. I want you to take note that I cut the wood with the lines going horizontally to assist in creating more of an optical illusion that things are even straight and square. So it's all ready to be installed inside the dormer above the window. Now in addition to covering the part above the window inside the dormer, I did want to do the upper sides of the dormer. And when I call the upper sides, it's the part right next to the window area that's in the slanted part that comes to an angle or a point. So I used my paper, brown paper bag as my template and glued some coffee stir sticks to it. And here I'm just kind of scoring it before I go ahead and use my craft night to complete the cut. Now this is not necessarily the proper way to do it, but it's what I did dolls. I scored it with the saw and then cut it with my knife. And although it looks a little bit scrappy, this is my completed piece and it will do exactly what I needed to do in the upper part of the dormer and you won't even be able to see that scrappy piece. And I'm following the exact same process to create one for the second side. Now keep in mind I had to make each one separately because they're not uniform on each side. Now I'm just showing you dolls this part here to show you that my coffee stir sticks were not quite long enough to fully cover the entire brown paper bag template piece so I had to create little extensions. Now if I had had longer coffee stir sticks I wouldn't have had to do that but because I didn't I had to improvise which is the truth so many times. So sometime again you have to be creative because everything doesn't work out perfectly but you don't give up you just keep working at it to resolve whatever problem or situation comes across your path. I think many times to me doll housing is almost like a metaphor for life. You just keep moving forward and working and a solution will be revealed. Now you can see here looking at it from the flip side that the pieces of wood extend past my brown paper bag template which is not a problem. I like to do things like that anyway to make it a little bit bigger to make sure it's not short and I'm using my metal ruler to guide me as I score across that area to cut it. Now here you can see I was about to cut it with my Swan Morton knife but then I got a little bit impatient and I ended up just using my electrical scissors to trim off the excess which is not a good practice dolls. Now here are my two completed pieces both of them a little bit scrappy but they're going to work and fulfill the purpose that I've created them for. So you don't have to be perfect to have purpose. So here we are back up in the attic and I've added the piece above the window and one of the halves to one side and I think it really finishes things off nicely. So now for the side that's a little bit more difficult because the wall is not even. Now in this frame I'm playing around with the piece of wood to see how things will lay before I actually add the glue. I just want to ensure that it's going to cover everything that I'm trying to cover and I'm putting it right on top of the wallpaper. Now in addition to adding that upper piece I'm also going to need to do something to fill in these gaps around the side because one side everything fit really neatly but on the opposite side of the dormer along the window there was a lot of gapping so I won't be finished until I address that. So I'm currently cranking out a way to address that. The more I decorate and renovate doll houses, the more I believe baseboards, crown molding, and all those decorative elements were designed for more than just decoration. They seem more like masters of disguise. 
So here you can see me doing some of my precise measuring, trying to determine the length that I need to cut that piece of wood to cover the gaps along the edge of the window. And today I'll be using my new miter shears and there is a link in the description for those. I had worn out a pair that I had bought previous to starting the channel and this pair is working really, really great. So I just trimmed off a small piece and I have realized that I have cut it too short. So that's why dolls, you measure twice and cut once. So even after I found that piece and cut it, there was still more gapping to be resolved. So I ended up cutting another piece of baseboard to use as the molding. Now you see, I still have the short piece and the long piece, but I figure if I put a piece of wood on top of that piece, it will cover up the gapping and it will take up the space where the little piece was cut too short. So I used that additional piece and cut it to line it up there because I really did want to create sort of like a window seat or a ledge inside the window just in case one of the dolls wanted to spy out the window or put a plant or a vase or just simply have a seat. So I thought this would create sort of like a little ledge so it would be functional and decorative at the same time. So I'm cutting another piece of baseboard to be the little ledge and then I'm going to put the little wooden dowel under it to support it so that it'll be nice and sturdy and I am using my weld bond glue to attach it. So after all the cutting, the trimming, the shimming, and the mishaps, and all the multiple cuts of baseboard that I used as trim, I finally created a nice little edge or ledge inside the window that'll be functional and useful for the dolls. I think everything turned out pretty nice. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like from a distance because until all the glue is dry, you don't need to see it up close. <laughs> So this is the dormer now with all the wood around it and framed in. I'm zooming in a little bit so you can see what I mean. But I put a little ledge at the top and I actually didn't glue that in. I put it in there's so much tension it won't come loose. So I'm going to leave it because I think it'll come in handy to put little whatnots or actually have something to support the curtains. So I'm going to allow everything to dry and then come back and look at it to determine if I need to do anything else. And doing this quick flashback to before, I'm confident that I'm happier with the additional wood. So let's go ahead and allow that to dry and let me show you what else I did. Now dolls, this part was really fun because the house has a top and bottom porch, which is just like the house I grew up in. And I really liked the porch, but the brown paint really, to me, didn't look very authentic. So I chose to add some of those same coffee stir sticks to the porch to look like wooden planks. Now dolls, you may have to look away because there is excessive glue use in this frame. My concern was I didn't want the little strips coming up after I put them in. The space is very small and I wanted to ensure they don't come up. And so I put an ample amount of glue down and then began to just add the coffee stir sticks side by side across the front of the doorway. So it was really great because the sticks were actually the perfect length. So I didn't have to do any cutting except around some of the posts on the porch. So I laid them one by one, side by side, until I covered the entire porch area. At first I was concerned I really didn't know whether I would like it or not. But again, dolls, I want to encourage you to fail fast. Go ahead and try it if you don't like it then you can change it. But the more I work, the more I realize I really liked it a lot. And now that I realize that I really like it, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the top porch. Now I am going to weight it down and allow it to dry overnight. And then I'm going to sand it and possibly stain it again. Because after the sanding and rubbing off all of the excess glue, I'm anticipating it having an aged, well-worn look, which would be very natural for a big old house. So this is what it looked like in the process when I first started working. And this is what it looks like now that it's dry and I sanded it. I think it authentically looks like an old wooden porch. Look at that, dolls. Oh, I just love how the shadows are falling through the banisters. So let me go ahead and show you what the dormer looks like now that it's completed as well. So there's my little ledge or window seat. And you can see now I finished the upper parts with the paneled wood templates. And I've even added my little medallion piece that I painted, stained, and aged in a previous video. I will leave a link in the description. Now, dolls, if you've enjoyed this video today, let me know in the comments. I sure have enjoyed creating this for you. And always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all. 
on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.